And here is the moment of the truth. is a V0 code that we import into Cursor AI, now going to successfully actually work in our backend. Hit finish. And then look at this, y'all. What did I tell you? Company size, 1150. Email apples.gmail.com. Interest automation. Apple's product manager. Let's go ahead and start using V0 paired with Cursor AI to show you how to take a front end like this from V0 connected to a back end so all the data that we provide here actually gets saved into the cloud. Because right now, if I hit next, put in all these metrics here, hit next again, this doesn't get saved anywhere. This is no good. Therefore, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step, as if you've never coded before, how to build out a front end with V0, how to integrate that into Cursor AI, connect it to Firebase as our backend, and then by the end of the video, we'll have a fully functional form that actually saves the data. Sound good? Let's jump in. There's a lot of tutorials out there trying to show you little cool things with Replic, Cursor AI, V0, but none of them really connect it from dot zero to all the way to dot like actually full functional web application with a backend. So that's the purpose of this video. As you know with these videos, and if you don't, then welcome to this channel. My name is Corbin Brown. There'll be a Google Doc in the description that walks you step by step, all the terminal commands, everything we do that is showcased in this video. You can find it in that Google Doc. And in addition, I'm gonna provide a specialized chat GPT chat for the purpose of everything we're doing in today's video. Does that sound good? If it does so far, make sure you leave a like and let's find out how to do this. To get started here, let's go ahead and start with a prompt. This is gonna build out our front end using V0. If you want a whole video that shows you in seven minutes everything we can do with V0, check out that video right there. But for now, we're gonna say, generate a multi-step wizard to collect information on users when onboarding onto a SaaS product. We're gonna hit enter here. As we know from past tutorials, you can chat with it to get different code here. We'll be able to see a preview here and then we'll be able to export this code into Cursor AI. Idea here being that basically spend as much time you want in this stage of the process, just chat with it more, do whatever you want as the purpose of this video is to show you how to connect this to an actual backend and actually deploy an application rather than that little preview thing we saw earlier. Because that little preview thing is no good. It doesn't work. Here we go. So we have a preview here. We can open it in full screen, play around if you wanna play around. Let's go and export this code, which is gonna be add to code base. But before we do that, let's go and create our folder and our project in Cursor AI. To do so, make sure you come up to Cursor AI here. Make sure to do new window if you need to do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and open the terminal that's right here. In this terminal, we're gonna simply put MKDIR. With MKDIR selected here, name a project name. This is gonna be our directory. This is how we're gonna reference it. We're gonna say full app, enter. Now that we're in full app here, we're gonna go ahead and then create the actual application within it. Let's just go ahead and open this folder real quick so we can start messing around. I'm gonna open folder here, or let me back up, open folder and find full app. There we go, enter. And here we'll open up terminal again. And then from this spot, we're gonna go to terminal. We're gonna go ahead and paste that line of code that we find here. So we're gonna go add a code base, copy, hit paste, and then hit enter. One thing you need to know is that if this is your first time doing this, you're gonna get a notification basically saying, do you wanna install some dependencies? Say why, say yes, hit enter. First question it's gonna ask is that, do you wanna start an XJS project? We're gonna say why, not why like, why is this happening? Why is it like, yes. What is the name of this project? We'll say my new software, enter. Now we're creating it. You're gonna see files end up over here and this successfully completes step one here where we take V0 code and put it into a cursor AI project. Let's choose some relevant settings here. We're gonna say New York, New York, New York. We're gonna say neutral. We're gonna say yes. Let's get going. With all that complete, you'll see that we have our nice little app here with all this relevant information. I dive way deeper into this topic and other videos on my channel. For now, I just wanna connect you to the back end. What we can do is we can hit app here. We can go to components, onboarding, dash wizard. This is gonna be the relevant code that we saw earlier from V0. Now that we have that done, we need to make sure we can run this in the front end so it's in localhost 3000. Localhost 3000 is our ability to start development with no internet connection. It's purely within our local machine, your laptop, your desktop. Make sure we're in the right area when we deploy this, this is not gonna be in full app. This is gonna be in what we just named this Node.js project, which is gonna be my new software. I'm gonna do CD, my new software. Kind of makes sense. Enter. Now the way you run Node.js projects is gonna be NPM run dev. Hit enter. With it running, you'll notice that we'll get this nice little success message here. And if you simply click this link here, it'll show up. There we go. We're in localhost 3000. This is our front end. And this is kind of the preview we saw in V0, but it's in our localhost 3000. I hit next, next, previous. This is all the relevant data associated with the form. We're still not connected to a backend. So let's go ahead and do that. So with that running, let's just go ahead and just do some quick code here as there is one thing that this form does that it should do. And that is if I go ahead and put my full name here, but I don't put in an email and hit next, 
it lets me proceed to the next step. No good. So instead of me showing you like some past methods I've done with my full blown three hour playlist that shows you how to build out an actual website, I'm just gonna use cursor AI. I'm gonna hit command A, I'm gonna hit command K or control A, control K, depending on what OS you use. I'm gonna go ahead and say, make it so that in order for me to hit next in the form, all input fields are filled in, submit edit, getting some new code. So what you'll notice now is that it actually identifies the new code. So it deletes the previous code. And then with the green, it shows us the new code. We're gonna say accept. And as we love with localhost 3000, I can simply save this. And if I go back to my form, you will notice that I can't hit next anymore because of the fact that we don't have an email. Therefore, now that I put an email in, we can hit next. Can't hit next anymore. Got to fill out the variables. Pretty solid. Now with that change, let's go ahead and get it back in. As a side note, if you want to know how to connect this code repository to GitHub, I'm going to link one of the lessons from my three hour course that just shows you how to do that. Basically, this allows it so that the code you create is in the cloud as well as the local machine you have. This is really good and basically a standard practice with software developers. So make sure you do this step. Once we do that though, we're gonna go ahead and begin the process of creating our backend here, initializing it and adding it to our project. First thing you need to identify, anytime you are working within this repository, make sure you're in the right area. Look at that. My path for the right area is gonna be full app where we name the repository slash my new software, which is the actual app itself. Now that we've done that, let's begin. Come to firebase.com and hit create project. Name this project, whatever you want. For me, I'm just gonna say new software. Hit continue. For my purpose is I'm not gonna connect Google Analytics. If you want a video on that, check out my big playlist. Create project. We are creating a Firebase project software. Hit continue. First major thing, let's identify the kind of app we're creating. The app we're gonna create today is a web app. Therefore, we're gonna select web. With the naming of this app, name it whatever you want. Obviously name it something that's relevant to what you're creating. So I'm going to do new software again. Make sure to select also set up Firebase hosting as that is relevant for you to have a backend that can store data. Register app. This next part, this is going to be blurred for obvious reasons as this is relevant information for this Firebase app. This right here. Or I guess you can't really see that because it's blurred out. But point being is that you'll see a bunch of code there. Don't worry. I'll show you how to do that. First thing you need to do though is make sure you have Firebase installed. Copy that. As a side note, if any of these commands don't work such as NPM, why isn't the NPM command not working? Check out that video right there, 30 minutes long, shows you from ground zero how to make sure the NPM command works. For now though, install Firebase. NPM install Firebase. Perfect, it has been installed. With it installed here, let's go ahead and hit new file in the top of our directory here, and I'm gonna just do firebase.js. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this code. Copy, paste that code. Once the code is pasted here, we're almost there. Now the rendering of our actual application is done in page.tsx. Therefore, let's go to import firebase.js here. One thing I forgot to do in our Firebase file here is make sure that you export the actual app itself. So we're gonna do export default app, page.tsx. Then over here, we're gonna do import Firebase app. Coming back over to Firebase, do this next command line here. This is gonna give you the ability to do different abilities within Firebase. That's gonna allow us to do Firestore, hosting. There's other stuff like storage functions, etc. Paste that line, hit enter. Okay, we are on the right track here. Now that we've done that, now we have the tools, the abilities to initialize different features within Firebase, let's go and actually log in. So I'm gonna go to log out first because I'm probably already logged in. So I'm gonna do Firebase log out and then I'll do Firebase log in. What you'll probably do if this is your first time is just Firebase log in. Hit Y here. Make sure whatever account you're logging in up to this point is the account associated with your Firebase profile. For me, it's contact at webcafeai.com. All this information, you're gonna hit allow. We've successfully logged in. Now that we're here, we're gonna do Firebase in it. Now that we're logged in. No, not Australian in it might, just in it. Enter. This is gonna give us the ability to initialize different things within our project. So first off, let's initialize hosting. We're gonna use our up and down in the arrow keys. We're gonna come down to hosting here. We're gonna hit enter. Oh, my bad. Space bar, Firebase in it again, boom, enter. Then the next option here of using an existing project or create a new project, we already created the project, so we're gonna say use an existing project. For us, we're gonna scroll down here. It's gonna be new software, enter. What do you wanna use as your public directory? We'll say public, configure it as a single page app, rewrite all URLs to index.html, we'll say why. For GitHub, we'll say no for now, but I referenced that tutorial earlier that you could watch if you wanna know how to do that. And for now, we're gonna go. So in order to deploy to hosting, we're gonna do Firebase deploy. It is deploying hosting. And then in order to see our application here, and let's see if it works, we're gonna go ahead and copy this hosting URL, which doesn't seem to be working right now. So let's see what's up. So here we go. I went ahead and got it working here. As you see with our hosting URL, that's right up there. It is currently live. Let me show you step-by-step step how I did this. So if you ever run into errors in this tutorial, you know how to troubleshoot and I just don't leave you hanging. Now, one thing really quick, that URL 
just doesn't look good, right? Like an actual software or website you plan on developing, it probably shouldn't be that URL because it looks a little crazy and it's a web app. Therefore, if you want a video that shows you how to make custom domains for your Firebase web app, check out the school community in the description down below. Proceed and let's see how I fixed it. Two major things. First thing, hit Control L, Command L. This is gonna open up the chat. Why is this relevant? What you need to do is simply this. You need to go to every Firebase file because of the fact that we're trying to fix a Firebase issue and simply hit this add button up here. With this add button selected, select anything relevant to Firebase, select your package.json, package.lock.json. These are relevant files for deploying and scripts. I'll show you more what I mean by that pretty soon here. Your page, firebase.js, components, like anything really, just throw a bunch in there. Then what you wanna do at this point is that you either wanna show relevant errors that you received in terminal or just simply put out like, how do I deploy this to Firebase into this web app? So for example here, I'll put all the relevant files. I'm like, make it so I can deploy to my Firebase hosting. And then it gave me all the correct code that I needed to follow step-by-step, step, such as updating the next.config.js, updating my package.json, updating my Firebase.json. So that, those are all over here. So go ahead and copy, paste over. And just for a little context of package.json, notice, next build, next dev, next export, npm run build, and Firebase deploy. What this does is this is how we reference either building the front end or the back end in a simple command line. So for now, the way I'm currently doing it is I'm just gonna simply put like npm run build for the front end and then firebase.deploy or firebase deploy for the back end, at least for hosting. So if you run into issues or you run into errors, if the Google Doc doesn't help, the ChatGPT chat I provide doesn't help, use the Control L, Command L feature here, select all the files, and then you can even go as far of if you get specific errors in your terminal when you're trying to deploy the front end or deploy the back end, paste the entire error right there and get the results. For example, I got this error right here. There was an issue with components UI input.tsx. If I go to components UI input.tsx, I come to this file, I'll start a new chat, I will take the exact airline, I'll paste it in here, hit enter, and it'll give me the answer. And through this logic, I realized I didn't even need to import the Firebase right here. This is just coming from my logic of when I do React-based apps that are on app.js. For now though, we don't need to import Firebase.js just yet, but we will soon here as we're gonna be inputting logic here so we can handle backend logic. So let's go ahead and begin here. Coming back to Firebase, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna simply go to build. Now there's a couple things we wanna add here, such as hosting. So this is where we can check all our hosting deployments as we just did together here. Let it load, there we go, with the relevant URLs right there. The one we're gonna care about today on top of hosting is our Firestore database. This is what's gonna make that form actually work. Let's go ahead and select create database. Database ID will go with default. Location will stick with its default as well. The next question comes down to security rules. This is very relevant in the context of building out an application. E.g., there is certain data found in the database that you wouldn't want all users to get access to, maybe only auth users, maybe only you as an individual. There's certain ways you can gatekeep this. I'll probably do a whole video on this, so make sure you subscribe. For now, we're gonna start in test mode here and create. Here we go. This is our database. There's a bunch of cool stuff we can do in here. There's a bunch of ways we can reference it. But for now, let's start a collection here. We'll just put form. Hit next. And we're going to need a relevant document to start with. This is just name structuring. For now, we'll just say form test and then hit save. We just added our first data point. In reality, this isn't actually going to be the way we do it in our front end. For now, though, you get an idea. Basically, we start with like a global collection here or a general collection. Then those turn into docs. Typically good formatting is gonna be some type of general name, e.g. users, a unique identifier, and then the relevant documents associated with that user. There's a bunch I could do on this topic, but for now, let's just connect it. Firebase in it. We're gonna scroll down here to Firestore, space, enter. What file should be used as Firestore rules? Default, enter. What file should be used for Firestore indexes? Enter. And there we go. If you wanna see your relevant rules, you're gonna come down here to firestore.rules, Firestore.index, this is your Firestore everything. I can update this, deal with this in another video. For now though, let's set this up. I'm gonna select all the code in firebase.js and I'll put in the line import Firestore and export it so I can use it. Submit edit, hit accept. Once you hit accept, I know this is blurred out for obvious reasons, but once you hit accept here, you're gonna notice it as DB. DB is how we're gonna reference it and reference different functions we can do within Firestore. So actually to be honest with y'all, we need to export a little bit more functions. To do so, we're gonna say we need the ability to set doc, get doc on snapshot. A lot of this will make more sense as I explain it in this tutorial, but for now, what you need to know 
is we need to export a bunch of stuff that we're going to use within the front end of the code. So make sure to add export as well. It wants to export it up here. That's not necessary. We can actually export it down here. There we go. Now we got some functionality here. If we need more, we'll go ahead and proceed. As I noticed, we don't have set doc here. Or we do have set doc. Okay, we're good to go. Let's go ahead and jump over to our onboarding. Onboarding data, this is the original code we got from V0. From here, we're gonna go to select this import selection here. We're gonna say import Firestore as well. Well, actually, let's see if we can push this to the limits. Minute Command A, Control A, Command K. Let's see how powerful Cursor AI is at handling layman dictation. Okay, let's use Firestore to save the data from the form when I hit submit. At the end, use this doc path. The doc path is what I referenced earlier when it came to what we created that first little data point. Form submission. This is going to be the collection name, general. Then submission-unique number, e.g. YY789. Then all the relevant information is going to be found within that doc. Name, email, company size, etc. I'm curious, is Cursor AI really that powerful? Submit edit. First thing you'll notice is that we are currently importing from Firebase, the DB, the doc, the set doc. Next, the submit button actually has a function associated with it now. This actually is looking pretty good here, y'all. Submission ID is submission slash date now. That's cool. So it chose to use the date as the unique identifier. Set doc is going to be found within that path that we referenced earlier here. I'm going to hit accept. This actually looked pretty good, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I'm impressed. DB, form submission, submission ID, good. And then within the submission doc, we have name, email, company size, role, interest, submitted at. Everything's looking good so far. In order to know where this is being referenced, we're going to command F here, and then we can see it is submitted here. Let's just see if this even works. To do so, we have two options. Either we could redeploy this to that hosting URL or alternatively, just use our localhost 3000. So for now, let's just use localhost 3000. I'm gonna go ahead and rerun at npm run dev. Let's open up this localhost 3000 here. This is just to allow us to do fast code edits if there is an error. So for your reference, if we come up here, so that's currently running as you see here to make sure to confirm. Okay, we're good to go. And just to make sure that you feel like, is it connected? We can do a real quick test here. If I just add a bunch of characters here, come over here. There we go. They show up here. We're live. Now let's see if this works. So if we come back up to our Firebase here and we have our local host here, we're good. We should see a new doc collection show up here showing that we've actually saved data to the back end. And what is always good is that we have console logs. In order to open them on Google Chrome, it's going to be inspect, hit console, and we're good to go. Apples, apples at gmail.com. Hit next. 11 to 50. Next. Select your role. Product manager, next. Automation, next. And here is the moment of the truth. Is a V0 code that we import into Cursor AI now going to successfully actually work in our backend? Hit finish, finish. We get our message here, onboarding complete, data saved successfully, did it actually save? There we go. Form submission, submission with a unique identifier. Date now, this is gonna be in Unicode. And then look at this, y'all. What did I tell you? Company size, 1150, email apples.gmail.com, interest automation, Apple's product manager, and submitted on October 17th of 2024. If you feel like you learned something up to this point, make sure to leave a like. Couple things. First thing, right now for our current logic, we only needed to reference DB, doc, and set doc. That's all we're using in our functions. But as you saw from the original import file, there is a ton of other stuff you can do within Firestore that's pretty cool. One that is really particularly cool is an on snapshot. And this will listen to an endpoint found within Firestore and if data exists, you can reflect a different user interface. That might've sounded very confusing. I'll probably need to do a video on that. But for now, we've successfully connected our front end with our back end with a database. I want you to notice as well how we identified the doc path, why that original cursor AI prompt was as it was. That is because of the fact that is when you set docs or read docs, there is always gonna be like a path, right? So we got our DB form submission, which I identified, and then the submission ID. Now, right now we have an alert and that's the alert you saw. We got that little pop-up from Google Chrome. We're good. In theory, we could put a console log here for the payload. There is a console error here. So if an error did incur, we would see it in our console logs and everything about the board in that manner. For now though, you know how to connect to a backend. I'll probably do more videos on this. So make sure to subscribe, it's completely free. I may put that code you just saw in a GitHub repository, therefore allowing you just to click on it and then just copy and paste some files over if you get lost. So let me know if you want to do that, but make sure you leave a like, check out my three hour course that shows you how to build out an entire front end using AI and coding. If you want to see that in the description down below, but without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. We have backend data. There is data. Email. Those are two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.